Welcome to the Buddhist Boot Camp Podcast. Our intention is to awaken, enlighten, enrich, and inspire a simple and uncomplicated life. Discover the benefits of mindful living with your host, Timber Hawkeye. The following is a list of book recommendations and why I recommend them. I remember the first time I read The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. I would read a paragraph or two, put the book down, close my eyes, and try to wrap my head around what I had just read because it completely shifted my perspective. When we talk about self-exploration, we think of a journey inward, yet the narrative invites us to take a bird's-eye view of our behavior, thoughts, and emotions, which can be extremely uncomfortable at times, but immeasurably valuable. It's not a thick book, but it took me a while to get through it because I would pause so often to contemplate the ideas presented therein. We've been driving the vehicle that is us for many years. When you're ready to look under the hood to better understand why we sometimes run hot or cold, where our limitations are, or what makes that funny noise in the engine, then head over to the recommended bookshelf section on BuddhistBootCamp.com and go down the list of recommended books. Re-listen to this podcast episode to figure out which literary gem to tackle next, and then pass the books along to someone else on the journey. The only other book I regularly return to and read time and time again has gone out of print and thankfully back into print multiple times over the years. It is called Passage Meditation by Eknath Iswaran. I remember reading it for the first time in the early 90s and then again 10 years later and thinking, <laughs> are you kidding me? I knew this information 10 years ago, but it took it that long to sink in. <laughs> I guess we can only absorb what we're ready to understand at any given moment and not an ounce more. But I truly believe this book timelessly and colloquially shares a foolproof recipe to mindful living. During my first book tour across the U.S. with Buddhist Boot Camp back in 2013, I gave a talk in Richmond, Virginia, during which an elderly man with a long white beard gave me strange looks until the floor was opened for questions, at which point his hand was the first to go up and he asked if I had ever read Buddhism Without Beliefs by Stephen Batchelor. I said I hadn't and he strongly recommended that I give it a go. Driving from one book event to another every day, I spent many hours on the road so I downloaded the audiobook narrated by the author himself and my jaw dropped. I remember emailing my publisher right away and telling him that if I had actually read this book prior to publishing Buddhist Bootcamp, I wouldn't have published Buddhist Bootcamp. I would have spent my life promoting Stephen Batchelor's work instead. He immediately pointed out that while Batchelor's academic delivery resonated with me personally, it covers Buddhism in a scholarly fashion from deep within, Buddhist Bootcamp is more of a gateway drug to Buddhism, <laughs> not the intense exploration that Stephen Batchelor offers in Buddhism Without Beliefs or another one of my favorites by him, Confessions of a Buddhist Atheist. So if you want to best understand why I often discourage people from being Buddhist necessarily, but rather Buddha-like, then give his books a listen. Next, we've got The Gifts of Imperfection by Brene Brown, or in all honesty, anything by Brene Brown, because she's truly talented in talking about shame and vulnerability in such a way that doesn't send you running in the other direction, but actually draws you in. Okay, so far, those are all pretty serious and heady titles. So let's talk about a few breezy reads that still inspire and ignite joy, which is an important flame to fan between all of the other heavier reads that I will recommend later on. From A Man Called Uv by Frederick Backman to The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth Stein, which is a book narrated in the first person by a dog. And then there's The Holy Man by Susan Trott. It's a fantastic book to read together with someone, taking turns between chapters, about a journey to meet the holy man and how much of the wisdom is gained on the way there, not necessarily upon arrival. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz are applicable to anyone and everyone, as they relieve much of our self-inflicted suffering through the practice of never taking anything personally, not making any assumptions, being impeccable with our word once we understand the power of language and the importance of speaking with integrity, and, of course, trying our best, which changes moment to moment. No book I've ever read has ever had more highlights in it than The Art of Happiness by the Dalai Lama or A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. 
Both are gentle mind benders and visualizing a much brighter future if we simply shift our perspective just a little bit. The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho needs no introduction. Just read it and you'll understand. Fight Club, on the other hand, be it the book or the movie, most certainly demands a warning that it is in fact extremely violent and unapologetically direct and forward, not even tempting to gently wake you up, but rather hit you on the head with a spiritual 2 by 4 to wake you the F up. And speaking of the F word, there are two titles worth mentioning that you might shy away from because of their vulgarity, but both books, F It, The Ultimate Spiritual Way by John Parkin, and The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F A Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life by Mark Manson. I strongly recommend the audio version of The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F because the narration really makes it fantastic. Speaking of good narration and audiobooks, let's discuss a couple of titles that aren't necessarily inherently spiritual per se, yet are extremely enjoyable and even bring tears to your eyes because they're so beautifully read. Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Sines is narrated by V. Lynn manuel Miranda. Yes, that Hamilton guy. <laughs> It's a beautiful coming-of-age story. And then there's Tattoos on the Heart, written and narrated by Gregory Boyle, as he tells the true story of Homeboy Industries, a gang intervention program. The narration is superb. My favorite book of all time to physically read, not in audio, isn't the religious studies, psychology, or spiritual realm type, but it's actually Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand. It is a far cry from a book that I would ever think I would enjoy, as it talks about World War II and prisoners of war, yet I couldn't put the book down. It is an amazing page-turner about the human spirit and what we can endure. I was actually traveling across Australia when I was reading this book, and I remember arriving in Sydney, staying with a fantastic host family, eager to show me the sights and take me out, but all I wanted to do was stay home and read the book. <laughs> it's that good. Another book better in your hands than ears if you're interested in some of the psychology behind why we do the things we do. I really enjoyed Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me by Carol Tavers and Elliot Aronson. It's about why we justify foolish behavior, bad decisions, and even harmful acts. It's a great introduction to cognitive dissonance as well if you're brave enough to look under that rock. My goodness, there are so many other books I can mention, from Old Turtle, Questions of the Heart by Douglas Wood, which appears to be a children's book, but trust me, it isn't. Much like Shel Silverstein's The Missing Piece Meets the Big O. I highly recommend a book to anyone out there who is foolishly looking for someone else to complete them, quote-unquote. I can't wrap this up without mentioning Conversations with God by Neil Donald Walsh, which tends to really resonate with readers who believe in God but not in religion. <laughs> if I could see you guys, I'd ask for a show of hands as I raise my own. And by far, the book closest to my heart that I quite honestly never talk to anyone about because it is so personal to me is the Bhagavad Gita translation by Stephen Mitchell. It leaves me speechless every time I pick it up because it is so different than anything else I've ever read. It contradicts so much of what we think a relationship with God would be like and is strangely a religious book that itself describes how unnecessary it is to have religious books after you have already found God. Here is my favorite quote from the Gita. As unnecessary as a well is to a village on the banks of a river, so unnecessary are all scriptures to someone who has seen the truth. For a complete list of recommended books and links through which to order them, please visit BuddhistBootCamp.com and click on the bookshelf tab. Enjoy your reading and comment back on which books you liked and which ones you absolutely loved. Then share them with others. Timber Hawkeye is the best-selling author of Faithfully Religionless and Buddhist Boot Camp. For additional information, please visit BuddhistBootCamp.com where you can order autographed books to support the Prison Library Project watch Timber's inspiring TED Talk, and join our monthly mailing list. We hope you have enjoyed this episode and invite you to subscribe for more thought-provoking discussions. Thank you for being a soldier of peace in the Army of Love.